We're back, everyone, having a fascinating discussion with Dr. Carolyn Dean. She has co-authored this fantastic book, The Yeast Connection and Women's Health. Be sure you get your copy today. We have these in stock. I just couldn't put this one down. You can see this is the one for the show, and it's all bent. That's because I couldn't put it down when I was reading it. <laughs> Dr. Dean, I'd like to kind of explore now some of the disease processes you talk about in the book and their connection to yeast. I think everyone's going to be really surprised. Really yes, surprised. yes. I was as I was going through the book. And that's where doctors do have a hard time because, uh, for example, you take autoimmune disease. It's become just rampant oh in the, in it the is. past. We're getting calls every day. Mm -hmm. Now, autoimmune, it's like the body's attacking you. Mm -hmm. And why is it doing that? The, the immune system would not attack a healthy body. Right. So right. it starts out that you're diseased or you have inflammation. So in the yeast world, we believe that maybe it's a yeast overgrowth that actually is putting all these 180 different toxins into mm. the bloodstream. The immune system is attacking them and s tissues get, get hit. They get assaulted in the mm. crossfire. So you'll have an autoimmune disease of your thyroid and it'll be yeast, of your prostate and it'll be yeast of your ovaries and it'll be yeast. So I really encourage people to, to look at the yeast connection if they've got some sort of strange disease that the doctors couldn't figure out for a long time. Mm -hmm. It could be yeast. Yeah. What about the fibromyalgia connection? Do you find one? Yeah, just oh, name yeah. some of these things it could be connected to. Yes, the fibromyalgia, what that tends to be is, is the muscles tighten up and mm -hmm. they get irritated. There are two things that I think of there. It's, it's the yeast toxins kind of developing in the muscles and joints. And we could also talk arthritis. In Chinese medicine, in order that toxins don't affect the internal organs, the toxins are diverted to the muscles and joints. Mm -hmm. It's natural. The mm -hmm. body's trying to protect us. And then we think that that's the disease, but yeah. it's, it's really a buildup of toxins. The other is magnesium with fibromyalgia. If I can get people to treat their yeast and go on magnesium, they can get rid of 75% of their fibromyalgia. Wow. Mm -hmm. Headaches, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, thyroid conditions, autoimmune, rheumatoid arthritis could be connected somehow, yes. lupus, yes, no? Yes, 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 and these conditions, when you think of rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, people are put on cortisone. Yes, they are. We didn't even talk about how cortisone causes yeast overgrowth. Mm, mm. And the immune system. stress, just being stressed produces a lot of cortisone, natural cortisone, mm -hmm. and that feeds yeast. Yeah. So it's... it's yeah. Dr. Dean, it, this program is primarily intended for lay people, but mm -hmm. I would have been surprised to learn that we have a lot of doctors watch this program for our news and new information. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to let everybody know, all the doctors know, that I recently attended a medical conference in Washington, D.C., and multiple speakers got up and spoke about this, the syndrome you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they had the scientific data that took it from point A to point B to C, D, D to F, where the yeast gets in the gut, penetrates the wall of the gut, the leaky gut syndrome, mm -hmm. complex food molecules enter the bloodstream, initiate an immune reaction mm -hmm. that leads to autoimmune disease. It's not just a theory or somebody's idea anymore. Yeah. There's facts behind this now. Is that, is that what you're learning? Oh, very true. Absolutely. And when we talk about the yeast penetrating the intestinal walls, the budding yeast, when they have room to grow, they change into a thread-like yeast. Oh. And they do poke holes. Uh -huh. Now, they're not going to jump into the bloodstream, but they poke the holes and then the yeast toxins or incompletely digested food molecules will get in through those holes. Yeah. And they'll start causing a lot of problems because Lots our body is set up to attack foreign okay. molecules. Well, let's get started on how we fix this problem, yeah? Mm -hmm. how, how, what do we do? Mm -hmm. it, I, you know, in our culture, we have a notion that there's a pill for everything, so certainly we have that one pill approach for the yeast connection, yeah? <laughs> oh? Yes, yes. Wouldn't it be nice? It, oh, it would be nice, yeah. but it, it's just not going to happen. And because doctors are trained in, in the, the one symptom and one drug 
to cured approach, they have a very hard time with yeast because it, it requires some discussion. It requires watching a show like yours to learn about the possibility that this is a, this is a uh -huh. problem. So I do want folks to get this book from, from your site and understand where they fit in. That's number one. You have to see this problem in your life. So did I hear you just say it won't fix itself? Oh, it won't fix Is that itself. kind of what you're saying? Yeah, it yeah. won't fix itself. But right. where do we start? Right. That's what we need to know. So it's knowledge. When you get the aha, okay, that's me, yes. and you decide that you want to do something about it, then it's you start with diet. You don't run for a pill. You look at your diet. If, if there's a lot of sugar, if there's alcohol, the um, sugar, wheat, and dairy um, uh, free diet is because sugar is a disaccharide that feeds yeast. Uh, milk sugar, the lactose, is a disaccharide that mm -hmm. feeds yeast. And bread, especially you know, plain white bread and all those white, uh, wheat products, they're just stra strands of glucose molecules uh -huh. and they quickly break down and feed yeast. Right. So it's how, it ferment beer, for example. You know, mm -hmm. ferment alcohol. Yes. Just put in sugar, a little yeast, and yeah, yeah. there you and, go. And well, Dr. Dean, it. why is it that people that suffer from this crave those very foods that cause oh, them to have problems? It's, why in the world? It's the yeast. It's the Borg mind of the yeast <laughs> yeah, the that alien. is actually, yeah. you know, give me food, give me food, give me food. It is creating the craving. I find that if, if you can go on a yeast-free diet for about five to seven days, you actually no longer crave yeast. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that dramatic. Wow. And you don't crave the sugar, you don't crave the yeasty foods, you don't crave wheat. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. strict of a diet would a person have to do to accomplish what you just said for the five to seven days? Does it need to be 100% yeast-free or just lowered? You can start with lowered, but it is better to be as strict as possible because what what I say is um, you're going to kill off the stupid ones at first, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. weak ones, but some of the real um, uh, monster yeast, they'll just lurk in the background waiting, you, waiting for you to make the mistake and go off and say, oh, well, I can have this bagel and, and go off your diet. And as soon as you do that, then you'll grow up the monster yes. ones. So I, I do tell people, be prepared to, to be strict. Yeah. Now, your book, does it have dietary recommendations and instructions? So if somebody got the book, they would know what to do, correct? Correct. Yeah. Now, can you give us, like, the three biggest offenders again? Because you, if you have this yeast syndrome, mm -hmm. the brain's a little foggy, right? It takes <laughs> a little while. to. Yeah, so right. I'm craving right. foods, right. yeah, sweets and uh, yeasty foods, mm -hmm. like honey buns and cinnamon things and honey mm -hmm. sweet things. You yeah, know? you walk by a bakery and you yeah, smell oh, the, that's, the oh, yeast yes. and okay. the dough, and, uh -huh. and you do crave it. Yes, so sugar, wheat, and dairy. Yeah. And a lot of people will say, well, what else is there to eat? Well, there's a lot more. I know, but... Yeah, yeah but it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can do it. We're looking at, at lots of greens and salads, and, uh -huh. and you have your protein foods. Eggs are okay. Sure. They're not a dairy like a lactose um, um, milk or cheese. Okay. Uh, yogurt, plain, unsweetened yogurt is okay because it, it, the lactose is fermented out of it. Okay. In the minute before we go off to our break, let's talk quickly about medications. We hear Diflucan, mm -hmm. Nystatin. Mm -hmm. Name some of these because people may have to ask their doctor if it'd be okay to use some of these. Is it appropriate to use a medicine? Well, we, we look at um, garlic and onions and, sure. and curries and all the things that, that are natural antifungals. And we also look at uh, caprylic acid, which is mm -hmm. from coconut oil, and, and bentonite clay and psyllium as ways of detoxing the body. With medications, children especially, if they need something, they can't take a lot of, you know, yeah, garlic. Yeah, they're not approved for kids. They, no. they use Nystatin very okay. well, Okay. except don't get the sweetened one. And Diflucan can be helpful, but it, it has liver side effects. It's sure, extremely it's expensive. Yes. And it gives you the, the feeling that, well, I'm taking a pill. I don't have yeah, to do the I diet. Need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. there are medicines that can be helpful, mm -hmm. and sometimes I found for, in practice if you gave a person a week or two or three of medicine, uh, it gave them a kickstart, but they had to follow the diet. Mm -hmm. Let's explore more, folks, when we come back from this break, the natural agents to help with your yeast connection. We'll be right back.